Hello there, my name is Paul Cook. I'm one of the sales team at uh, Whitley Bay Home Organs and E Pianos. Welcome to my home here in Leicestershire. Um, I've got in front of me a Taurus 5 and uh, I'd like to run through a few little tips and tricks, not on Tyros 5, but actual plain tips. So, here we go guys, welcome back. Uh, Tyros 5, um, only just fits in my little room here, but uh, away we go. When we start looking at keyboards and we go to buy a keyboard, one of the primary sounds that we always ask about is the piano, okay? So, when you get your keyboard home and you're playing in a piano style, and just like me, I'm predominantly organ, so piano is fairly difficult. Um, playing bass and accompaniment and a melody on top. But the one thing that I find invaluable with the piano, you must have a sustain pedal. Let me show you why. If I play uh, an arpeggio or a rolling chord along the keyboard, it's not very impressive. Put a sustain onto it. Hope you can pick that out on video that the, the piano is still singing out until I take my foot off this here sustain pedal. They're not expensive to buy. This is a proper treadle one. You can buy a little, I think they're called FC5, a little foot switch if you want, if you want something a little less brutal, but sustain pedal a must. Okay, so when you go looking for your new keyboard and you're looking for this wonderful, thick, big piano sound, do it just this and get yourself a sustain pedal. Under £20, I'm sure you'll see that it'll be worth its weight in gold. So that's tip number one on a piano. Okay, guys, here we go. Tip number two. Um, <clears throat> when we've got our piano at home, we start to play. The piano is touch sensitive, so if I play softly, I can get a very nice soft sound. If I play harder, sounds completely different. So, experiment with touch. Okay, so there you go, tip number two, touch. We'll also come back to this subject later when we start looking at some of the voices such as saxophone and trumpet that touch has an amazing effect on. So, touch sensitivity. Have a look in the keyboard's brain. If, it, if it's too hard for you, I'm pretty sure that 95% of the keyboards out there, you'll be able to adjust the the force in which is needed to bring more colour and expression to your music. Tip number three. Um, this time I want to move on to uh, style play. So this is where we have an accompaniment in the left hand and we play the uh, 
melody in our right. Uh, on the Tyrus 5 here I've got a, a um, rhythm selection of a 40 swing ballad. Now, what I'd like you to take a notice of is the orchestration of the left hand. What's happening in the left hand when we play a chord? And the reason for this is that we tend to grab our favourite sound from the right hand and come in crashing all over what's been programmed in the left. Now these little fellas over there in Japan have spent hours and hours and hours orchestrating these back ends for us sometimes to go, dare I say, trampling all over. So listen to what's happening in the left hand. I'm going to put a little intro onto this. While we're talking of intros and endings, just a mini tip. Just check out your intro or your, your intro before you play your piece because so, although some of these intros are fantastic, sometimes they don't sit well if you're going to start off in a minor chord. So particularly with big band stuff, it tends to, it's musically correct, but it isn't. So just check it out. That's what I'm saying. So, okay, here we go. I'm using also a thing with Yamaha. We have a thing called OTS Link, which is one touch setting. So when I select my rhythm, the right hand voice is selected for me. In other words, it gives me something that they feel is in keeping with the rhythm. And this will happen every time I change the variation on the rhythm unit. And I'm pretty sure there, I know Korg do a link the same, and I'm pretty sure that the keyboard that you, you have somewhere will have a suggested registration or a one touch setting. So without further ado, listen to this orchestration uh, just how how lovely it is <laughs> Nothing fancy at all going on in the right hand. Basic, uh, fairly basic chords, nothing too spicy, but a great sound. And this is what I'm trying to say in a long, uh, long winded way, I guess. Tip number three, guys, is keep it simple. 
let the keyboard sing out as well give this left hand chance to to come through because some of the arrangements on there are stunning so there you go that's tip number three for you so um, we've gone now into big band jazz um, on page one from the swing and jazz section in the Tyrus I'm going to pop myself a little introduction on once again listen to the orchestration I'm going to be using the one touch link as well uh, but put in a few of these little bits together that we've talked about uh, enjoy and we'll see you next time <laughs> three tips for you to have a look at um, just going back to tip number three if you listen to the piece of music and go back to tip number two regarding touch sensitivity you'll notice that I was able to get the vibraphone in the piece what a wonderful world to sing out a little bit more in certain parts and that again is down to your touch sensitivity so it's a great little system to use on that piece also when I went to clarinet we started using a thing called uh, pitch bend, which is this big black wheel on the end of the keyboard that a lot of people get kind of, oh, what's that? It's all about synthesizers. It's not, it can be used in uh, many, many, many different ways. We're gonna cover that in another tip. So there you go for now, a little bit for you to be getting on with. And above all, stay safe and enjoy your playing. Thanks for watching. <laughs>